All right, everyone. Today, I'm going to be walking everybody through a quick selection of extremely useful tips to enjoy your Assassin's Creed Origins playthrough that much more. It's a really vast game. There's a lot going on, but this is the, uh, you know, the set of tips that I feel will best contribute to a positive gameplay experience and the things that I have found to be most useful and wish that I had known earlier in my uh, playthrough when I first started the game. So without further ado, let's get started. The first and possibly most useful tip that I have is how to best use your early ability points. Now there are three trees that you can spec into. There's the warrior tree, there is the seer tree, and there is the hunter tree on the left. And I highly recommend spending at least your first three, four to five, maybe even six ability points directly into the hunter tree and I'll tell you why. After you get eagle tagging, you move on to assassination XP. And the way that this works, assassinating an enemy grants you bonus XP, is by giving you a flat 10 experience gain on top of the initial amount that you would get, which scales anywhere from 3, 5, 6, 7, up to 18 to 20, uh, and later levels even higher. Uh, but early in the game, you get about 3 to 5 to 6 to 8 experience per kill, and it tacks 10 XP per assassination onto that amount which more than doubles, even triples, the experience gain rate in the early levels of the game. So I highly recommend grabbing this immediately at level 2. It's very cheap to grab. Uh, and then after that, grab Assassination Loot, which is really, really good when you're going through a base, maybe assassinating things, and you don't have time to go back and loot. Um, you have to keep moving and go quickly. Automatically looting an enemy after assassinating them will make that much more convenient. The, the next perk is Stealth Killstreak. Passive, successive assassinations grant you XP bonus if you are not detected, which is phenomenal because you're oftentimes going to move through a base rather quickly, uh, killing targets that don't suspect you, and then, you know, rapidly finding the next one, and you will get bonus experience yet again stacked on top of the assassination XP. And then the last one that I recommend grabbing is chain assassination as soon as you unlock the hidden blade. After assassinating an enemy with the hidden blade, you press Y to assassinate another enemy in range. This will proc all of your bonuses, your stealth kill streak, uh, your assassination XP, and it will vastly increase the speed at which you can clear enemies and the speed at which you level up. Now, the reason it's so important to be a higher level than enemies is because of the way the combat system works. If an enemy is higher level than you, it becomes extremely difficult to kill them. Even an enemy that is the same level as you can sometimes be very difficult to kill. Uh, however, enemies that are lower level than you are not necessarily super easy. So it's best to navigate through the game about three to five levels above anything that you will encounter. Even just one or two will make it much easier. But if you're on the same level as an enemy, or even just one or two levels below, it will become so difficult to do, uh, it will become very, very hard to progress, and they will deal massive amounts of damage to you. So these particular perks purchased very early on in the game, the Stealth Kill Streak, the Assassination Loot, and the Assassination XP, will make it much easier to progress through, level your character up fast, and they'll provide you a tremendous amount of value the earlier you grab them. Next up we have gear, but this is less of an individual tip and more of an explanation on how the gearing process works because it can appear more complex than it actually is. Within your different weapons, you have archetypes. You have the regular swords, you have the sickle swords, you have the dual swords, etc., etc. And then within those different overarching archetypes, you have specific types of swords. You have the devotee of Montu. You can get that in a blue, a purple, or a gold form. You have the Kopesh swords, you have the Canaanite blades, etc. Um, and you can get each of those with a blue, or a purple, or a gold rarity. Now, the blue versions of swords have one talent. The purple versions of swords have two talents, and the gold versions of swords have three talents. And you are never going to find a blue version of a sword that is better than a purple or a gold because it can never have more than just the one talent. This is kind of simulating depth, you know. All it does is it turns in, it turns all of the different uh, items or weapons that you can get into just, you know, uh, material fodder. What that means is you just deconstruct them as soon as you find them because they're never going to outperform the purples or the golds that you have. Now, even if you get a purple item or a gold item, the first or the second one that you get that you really want to equip, at a drastically lower level than what you are at now, even if you get it very early in the campaign and then you've leveled up 20 different times um, and it is you know vastly underpowered now, you can simply run to a blacksmith. Uh, let's see if he's over here. Here he is. You can simply run to a blacksmith and then interact with him, click upgrade, and whatever you upgrade will be brought from whatever level it is at the moment up to your current level. 
So it's actually not very, you know, fiscally responsible to upgrade from, let's say, 23 to 24. You don't want to be paying 480 gold, at least in my situation, to upgrade a 23 sword to a 24. But if I do want to go down to one of the golds that I got a long time ago, um, I have a golden scepter somewhere down here. This is a level 9, and I can take and upgrade it from level 9 all the way to 24. So as soon as you get a gold version of a weapon, that is the best possible version that you can use. Just make sure that you're waiting about increments of 10 levels before you level it up. Uh, that's about when it becomes obsolete, then you pay the gold, and then it's back on par. But blue weapons are never going to be useful. You're just going to deconstruct them whenever you get them, and it can seem a little bit more complex than it actually is. So just remember... Blue, bad, purple, okay, gold, really good. Upgrade them at brackets of 10 levels and you're good to go. The next tip is viewpoints. And I am so very happy that this is even a tip that I feel like putting in the video because it tells me that the map has done something right. If you scroll out and you look at the scope of the Assassin's Creed Origins map, you're going to see that there are tons of regions. They're very large. It's an enormous map with a ton of things to do. Uh, you know, a ton of distance. It's absolutely colossal. But within that map, there are all the different viewpoints and the different cities that you can fast travel to. I highly recommend whenever you run even remotely close to a viewpoint to immediately go unlock it. It may seem tedious at the time. You may just want to complete the quest objective that you're on. But if you don't do this, it can result in a huge amount of time spent traveling when you don't really need to. As you can see, even though I was in this region, I did not unlock any travel points. So now it would take me forever to get back to it. Similar down here, uh, similarly, we have Saqqara Nome. I have, again, not unlocked any fast travel points, even though I've actually been, you know, a decent portion of the way through this region. So I would have to travel to some neighboring district and then travel in on a mount, which can actually take a long time due to the scope of the map. So anytime you are even remotely close to a viewpoint, immediately unlock it because a lot of the quests will take you all over the map. And if you have these fast travel points, it's a really great quality of life boost. The last big tip that I have is to develop a farming route. Now, as you're upgrading things, you can upgrade your gear uh, with various different resources. You can upgrade your armor, your breastplate, your, your bracer, uh, your stabilizer glove, your quiver, your hidden blade. There's a whole bunch of different things. You'll get tools later on when you spec into the skill tree. Uh, all of these require large amounts of resources to upgrade to the higher tiers. And you're going to develop a farming route so that you can grab all of the different hides um, or materials that you need effectively. Now, I tried a whole bunch of things to try and to cheese this. Uh, I tried, you know, traveling away a stretch and then meditating. Uh, I tried meditating like 10 days right on the spot. I tried restarting the game. I tried logging out and logging back in, all this different stuff. Uh, I tried traveling to a different district and then see if I could come back and if the crocodiles had respawned. Um, but that's not what worked. What worked is just waiting a given amount of time uh, in the real world. So it appears to be tied to about an hour and an hour and a half. Somewhere in there, things will respawn. So what I recommend is developing a farming route. Um, the best place to find materials, especially hides, etc., are in various uh, animal camps, whether it be in the desert for lions or hyenas, um, or along the coastline for crocodiles or hippos. Um, go to all the different low-level areas that you found that house animals, and then farm them about every hour and a half to two hours just to be safe. Uh, this will result in getting a large amount of crafting materials, and since the trophies, if you go to your inventory, you will get a trophy from every animal that you kill. Since they are worth, you know, decent amounts of gold each, more so than you would find by exploring and looting uh, vases and chests and things, uh, you can actually get a large amount of currency to spend there as well. So develop a farming route is the last tip. Uh, make sure that it's things that are, you know, decently below your level so you can kind of spam the fight and go through it rather quickly. Uh, and then do that and cycle through those different points, the easiest ones that you found that are, you know, in close proximity to a fast travel point. Uh, do that about every hour and a half to two hours. The more you get upgrades, the more upgrades that you can, uh, you know, find and afford with all the different materials on your gear, the better gameplay experience you will have. And if you're struggling to find those resources, this is the best way to overcome that. That's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video. And while I do think that these tips are very valuable, I want to stress the fact that they are by no means 100% essential. Assassin's Creed Origins is a vast open world game and every player is going to have a unique experience. You could ignore all of these tips and still have a wonderful time in the game's universe. Uh, so get out there, have a fun time. Hopefully some of the information was valuable, but it's by no means saying that you must do all of these things in order to do well or have fun. Because, let's face it, video games are where players like to have their own choices. Uh, they like to do their own thing, so 
let me know if you got something valuable out of the video. Uh, I hope it served some purpose and was helpful to some people. That's going to wrap it up, though. Check out the links down below if you want to support the channel in any way. There's a ton of ways to do so. And as always, have a nice night.